You're listening to the Chapter a Day Audio Bible. I'm John Stonge, and today we're in Numbers chapter 15. And this is what we read. Then the Lord told Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you finally settle in the land I am giving you, you will offer special gifts as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. These gifts may take the form of a burnt offering, a sacrifice to fulfill a vow, a voluntary offering, or an offering at any of your annual festivals, and they may be taken from your herds of cattle or your flocks of sheep and goats. When you present these offerings, you must also give the Lord a grain offering of two quarts of choice flour mixed with one quart of olive oil. For each lamb offered as a burnt offering or a special sacrifice, you must also present one quart of wine as a liquid offering. If the sacrifice is a ram, give a grain offering of four quarts of choice flour mixed with a third of a gallon of olive oil, and give a third of a gallon of wine as a liquid offering. This will be a pleasing aroma to the Lord. When you present a young bull as a burnt offering or as a sacrifice to fulfill a vow, or as a peace offering to the Lord, you must also give a grain offering of six quarts of choice flour mixed with two quarts of olive oil, and give two quarts of wine as a liquid offering. This will be a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Each sacrifice of a bull, ram, lamb, or young goat should be prepared in this way. Follow these instructions with each offering you present. All of you native-born Israelites must follow these instructions when you offer a special gift as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And if any foreigners visit you or live among you and want to present a special gift as a pleasing aroma to the Lord, they must follow these same procedures. Native-born Israelites and foreigners are equal before the Lord and are subject to the same decrees. This is a permanent law for you, to be observed from generation to generation. The same instructions and regulations will apply both to you and to the foreigners living among you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you arrive in the land where I am taking you, and you eat the crops that grow there, you must set some aside as a sacred offering to the Lord. Present a cake from the first of the flour you grind, and set it aside as a sacred offering, as you do with the first grain from the threshing floor. Throughout the generations to come, you are to present a sacred offering to the Lord each year from the first of your ground flour. But suppose you unintentionally fail to carry out all these commands that the Lord has given you through Moses. And suppose your descendants in the future fail to do everything the Lord has commanded through Moses. If the mistake was made unintentionally and the community was unaware of it, the whole community must present a young bull for a burnt offering as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. It must be offered along with its prescribed grain offering and liquid offering and with one male goat for a sin offering. With it, the priest will purify the whole community of Israel, making them right with the Lord, and they will be forgiven. For it was an unintentional sin, and they have corrected it with their offerings to the Lord, the special gift and the sin offering. The whole community of Israel will be forgiven, including the foreigners living among you, for all the people were involved in the sin. If one individual commits an unintentional sin, The guilty person must bring a one-year-old female goat for a sin offering. The priest will sacrifice it to purify the guilty person before the Lord, and that person will be forgiven. These same instructions apply both to native-born Israelites and to the foreigners living among you. But those who brazenly violate the Lord's will, whether native-born Israelites or foreigners, have blasphemed the Lord, and they must be cut off from the community. Since they have treated the Lord's word with contempt and deliberately disobeyed his command, they must be completely cut off and suffer the punishment for their guilt. One day, while the people of Israel were in the wilderness, they discovered a man gathering wood on the Sabbath day. The people who found him doing this took him before Moses, Aaron, 
and the rest of the community. They held him in custody because they did not know what to do with him. Then the Lord said to Moses, The man must be put to death. The whole community must stone him outside the camp. So the whole community took the man outside the camp and stoned him to death, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Throughout the generations to come, you must make tassels for the hems of your clothing and attach them with a blue cord. When you see the tassels, you will remember and obey all the commands of the Lord instead of following your own desires and defiling yourselves as you are prone to do. The tassels will help you remember that you must obey all my commands and be holy to your God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt that I might be your God. I am the Lord your God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the privilege of being able to look at your word and think about what it contains and think about the things that you instructed people that lived a long time prior to us to observe and obey. And Lord, we know that some of the customs that the people of ancient Israel were required to follow under the Old Testament law are things that have been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So we aren't expected to obey the ceremonial laws that are referenced in this portion of Scripture. But we are expected to obey you. And Lord, in your word, you tell us that the evidence of our faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, will be shown out in how we live, in how we are obedient to your leading and your word. Lord, we realize that we're very much like the man that was gathering wood on the Sabbath in this passage. Lord, you had told the people of Israel repeatedly that they were to do no work on the Sabbath day. And for whatever reason, this man may have thought that he was not going to be caught doing that, or maybe he thought that wasn't a big deal to you, or maybe he thought that he could get away with it just this once because typically he kept that law. But Lord, you made an example out of that man, and you reminded the people of Israel that you expected them to live in holiness before you, and that you expected them to obey the laws that you had given them. Lord, we're so thankful that your law was kept for us in Jesus Christ. Lord, when we look at all the regulations contained in the Old Testament law, we recognize that in our own strength, wisdom, and power, we could never keep all of those things perfectly. And even when we look at this passage here, as you speak of people unintentionally failing to keep your word, you recognize that we couldn't keep these things perfectly. But you could. And there's nothing wrong with your law. The problem is with us. And so you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to keep the law for us. And now through faith in your son, Jesus, it's as if we have kept the law because he accomplished the work for us. And when you see us, you see him. Lord, we're grateful for this reality. We know that the strength of our flesh is not something that's sufficient to carry the day for us. But your strength is sufficient. And so, Lord, we pray that by your grace and in your strength that we would walk with you faithfully today and every day and that we would give glory to the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, in all that we say and do. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for all of these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Many of you know that in the fall of 2021, I started a coaching program and membership community called Platform Launchers. Platform Launchers was created to help people start online ministries and home-based businesses based on the message they feel led to share. The live training and the video content will help you write a book, start a podcast, develop a website, create a blog, effectively use social media, build an email list, and reach new people each day. It will also teach you how to earn a full or part-time income from the online services you provide. We have a vibrant community that's developed inside Platform Launchers and a great crew of pastors, bivocational ministry leaders, entrepreneurs, and small business owners that join our live calls every Tuesday evening. And I honestly look forward to interacting with them every week. It's one of the highlights of my week. And if you've ever thought about starting a message-based online ministry or a service-based business, I'd like to invite you to give Platform Launchers a free try for the next two months. Just visit PlatformLaunchers.com and enter the code 2MONTHTRIAL under the monthly membership option. That's 2MONTHTRIAL with the number 2. 
This will give you free access to the membership community, the training vault videos, the launch plan course, our office hours, and our live coaching calls on Tuesday evenings for the next two months. If you've been feeling a tug toward developing an online ministry or you're looking to create an online business or service that allows you to use your knowledge to help people while working from home, I'm convinced platform launchers will help you succeed. I'm looking forward to meeting you inside the membership group. Just use the code two month trial with the number two at platformlaunchers.com to try it for free.